that. Um, it's really, <laughs> it's really, really bad. Your, your sense of smell goes to, you know how they always talk about pregnant women get like crazy sense of smell and they're sick to everything? That's pretty much what happens. You're uh, around day 10. All the inflammation and mucus kind of comes out of your uh, sinuses and you can all of a sudden smell and you start smelling everything and it just gets stronger and stronger. So by day, day like 35, I couldn't even go to the store. Everybody stinks. Like this person walks by and like, they smell like dairy. This person smells like, you know, old meat. This person smells, like you can smell what they're eating. This person smells like pepperoni, you know, like, ugh, it was, um, it wasn't good. Uh, so that part's like blessing and curse kind of thing, you know? Uh, hey, how's, how's it going, TLK Knitting? I, I spied on your channel a little bit, but I haven't been around much. Sorry. I hope your knitting's going really good. Oh, GG Rollins says, cousin lives near a dog food factory. Yeah, there was a, uh, I used to play rugby and, you know, I went to school in Virginia and we used to drive by this place called uh, James Madison University and they had a dog food factory on the edge of town and you could, we go play rugby there and it was like just brutally horrible. Um, okay, so let's end the sound for a bit and we will talk talk. So yeah, uh, I mean, I'm going to eventually sit down and when I'm finally done with this whole process, I'll sit down and make a long video and take you through every step. But I, I'll answer your questions. Um, Trip, I've always had a horrible sense of smell. Like um, when I was doing, you know, when I was dissecting cadavers in school, I was the guy they would always get to go in and clean stuff up because I can't smell anything. Like I could do the dead bodies and the cadavers and all that stuff and not really be completely grossed out. I mean, the, the chemicals make you sick, but the, the smell wouldn't get me. Um, I used to have rental houses and some of the renters would move out and leave like, you know, a fridge of food for a month or two. And I could go in and clean that. No problem. Like where my wife would get so sick, even walking in that house, she couldn't handle it. So I, the worst smell to the best smell I've ever had. Um, and that took around day 10, the smell started coming back and then it increased. And now it has got to the point where it is crippling. Like I can't, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not joking that like I have to get Kate to feed the cat outside because the cat food stinks so bad. It, it like makes me nauseous. Um, you know, stuff like that, that food that's not natural smells really gross to me. So she was cooking up, like I said, some, um, like Morningstar fake bacon or something. And it just, oh God, I felt like so queasy when she was cooking it. You're, I, I had heard this, that if you go long enough, your taste buds completely change. But that's, I don't know if that's just because I can smell so much better or not, but it was, it was tough. Hi, Tracy. Oh, I miss Tracy. How you been? Um, I am not positive, by the way, Vicky, that the robot's working in here. I there's some sort of um, update stream elements ran and I don't know if my robot's working so I'm not sure if all these things are going to work if you want to play games and stuff I'm going to have to figure it out I think I have to put new tokens and generate new codes every time it updates it ruins everything um okay so let's see <sighs> 42 days just water no cheating no tea no lemon water no sugar water no i have to have a coffee no nothing like that water no vitamins no medications no nothing water um Ah, oh, thanks so much, Jeremy. I appreciate you you swinging through. I've been uh, <laughs> been not so hot the last three weeks. So, I've the longest I had ever gone was fourteen days, and this is forty two. So it's almost thirty days longer than I've ever gone. And honestly, I could have kept going. Um, around day thirty, my hunger completely stopped. 
Like, I'm not hungry at all. I actually, I don't even want to eat this food. Um, you'd think, like, all I wanted... For a while, all I could think about was food, and then it stopped. What is the worst... And the reason I'm stopping, because I think I could go longer, a lot longer, is the burping is taking me out. I, I, I had to push through... Um, I wanted to quit weeks ago, but I, I'm one of these guys that once I set a goal, like I will feel like a complete loser failure if I don't hit that goal. I mean, I don't care if somebody had to drag me by my hair across the finish line on this. Um, I was going to do it. If it practically killed me, I'd probably do it. So, um, what happened was... I can't quite figure this out. I've done some research. I've talked to some other, you know, people. I've looked at forums. And I'm not sure what the hell this is. I'm, I'm going to take my best stab at it. But I don't have very good gut bacteria in the first place. My intestines are all messed up from eating too much processed food over my life. So what I think happened was that... Originally, I was saying around day 10 to 12, I would just burp, burp, burp and feel like crap. And I thought it was like yeast die off. You know, I was like, oh, well, this is probably just all the bad guys dying off in your gut. Because what happens is, you know, a lot of people don't understand acid and alkaline and all that stuff of what's supposed to happen in your blood. And they kind of mix it up. Um, you're supposed to have parts of your body that are very acidic. And you're supposed to have parts that are very alkaline. And those two really shouldn't mix that much. And your stomach acid should be very acidic to promote healthy digestion. As it goes through your intestines, the intestines kind of you know um, break it down, and it becomes more and more alkaline. When it gets to the um, when it gets alkaline enough, it can cross into the bloodstream, and the blood should be alkaline. So over time, okay, I'm not sure what this is about. So do we have like a spammer here? All right, let's, let me grab him if I can get him. All right, give me a sec, guys. I got to deal with someone here. And done. All right, sorry about that. I just got a spammer in here for no reason. I thought I blocked him, but he's still going here. I think. Give me a sec, guys. Because he's being clever. You're so clever. Huh? I'm so proud that you can just put exclamation points. All right. Um, all right, so I guess we'll just have to turn off the chat to there. Sorry, folks. Still going on? It should be off, guys. Uh, sorry about that. I'm not sure how to how block his ass here. It should be. <sighs> Sorry, River Swap. Give me a sec, guys. I got to deal with the troll. It just won't stop. And it should be just turned off, but it's not for some reason. Is it on mixer or smash? One sec, guys. I gotta handle this. Anyway, um, so joys of live streaming. All right. 
Yeah, it's from another site. I've, I've turned off the site, but apparently it just doesn't seem to care. Let me, uh, let me try this one more time. Uh, you know what? We're just gonna shut that off. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jump over to, uh, that should kill that. Um, I'm just gonna use Twitch, guys. So I'll just be watching over on Twitch. I can't quite figure out why it's not blocking him over there. Um... Oh, you know what? Maybe it's just the wrong uh, wrong thing. Anyway, so I'm going to be over here on Twitch. You can still watch over there, but you won't be able to chat unless you're on Twitch. So here's the dealio. Let me, uh, let me bring up the Twitch chat so you guys can see it. Hopefully this works. Sorry, y'all. It's been a while since I've had to mess with this. Turn that off. Okay. Um, that should catch up here in a minute. So that's Twitch, I believe. Or am I not on Twitch? I don't understand. All right, anyway, so let's get back to it. So you got two areas. You got an alkaline acid kind of thing going on in your gut. And uh, what happens is your blood's actually supposed to be very alkaline in your area. Your gut's supposed to be acid. So uh, as you fast and you stop putting in food that um, changes that, you start leveling back out to what's supposed to happen. What normally happens is people eat such an acidic diet that it goes into their uh, intestines and makes their intestines very acidic instead of being more alkaline. And that stuff leaks into the blood, makes the blood acidic more, and then the blood has to buffer it so it doesn't kill you and uses up, you know, a lot of minerals. And it, it's a mess. Um, and the blood ends up being more acidic than it should. As you fast, that stuff starts to level out. And there are certain bacteria that can't handle that. They, uh, they live um, in a happy little, uh, you know, uh, alkaline environment or an acidic environment. So what has to happen is um, they... Um, they the... the bacteria eventually levels out and becomes normal in your gut. Like you, you should have bacteria that's happy in the alkaline parts and bacteria that's happy in other parts. And it doesn't. It, it just seems to uh, have an issue there sometimes. But as you're fasting, it, it should. So I thought that's what was happening. In other words, my gut was becoming alkaline enough that it was killing off all the bad bacteria. But apparently that's not the issue because... Um, I assumed everything was dying off because I felt like hell. I was like, okay, this has to be just like a huge yeast die off or something. And what would happen is um, uh, the wrong kind of bacteria is in there, I think. And it has not died as I had hoped. So I think uh, what ultimately took me out and made me quit this is every night for almost a month, around six o'clock, my body is working on something, breaking something down. I'm assuming, you know, you have like pounds of old food stuck in your intestine walls from years. And I assume the bacteria is eating that and working on it, it's slowly eating that and digesting it. And I would burp and burp and burp and burp like 
every five seconds. Blah, 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 blah. And it felt like somebody um, put baking soda and vinegar in my stomach. Like it was like foamy. And I assumed that it was um, some sort of gas buildup that happens throughout the day. I don't know. And it happens every day now. And it keeps me up all night long because I can't lay down. I feel like nauseous. I feel sick. Because gas, you know, that gassy, bloaty feeling makes you nauseous to everything. So that is what ultimately was the hardest part of this fast. And it just would not stop. Um, so I'm hoping if I eat, the bacteria will move on to the food and not so much my... It'll, it'll stop this... Uh, Black cleaning or whatever it's doing. I, I just can't handle it anymore, man. It's been forever. Hey, thanks, spidery beast. Um, so that's that's the deal. Is I'm going to... Uh, that's what ultimately took me out. And, uh, and the weird thing is my ankle. I know this is going to sound strange. But I had an old rugby injury 20 years ago on my ankle. And... Uh, my ankle uh, has a bunch of old scar tissue in it. In fact, it is never healed right. It has always stayed a little um, edemic. It's always a little swollen. And around 40 days in, my body was like, I think I'm going to heal this ankle now. And it just went poof overnight and blew up and swelled so bad. It was so painful. I thought I was going to get compartmental syndrome. I had to like ice the crap out of it. Couldn't walk on it. Couldn't do anything. I thought I broke it. It was that bad. Um, but I did nothing to set it off. I I was out in the garden and I did a little minor shoveling. Maybe. Maybe. But I didn't feel any pain. It, you know, I think if I like, broke my foot, I would know. And there was no bruising. So if I were to actually hurt my ankle, there would be black and blue broken blood vessels. Um, I think my body was like, okay, we're going to clean out this crappy old scar tissue and we're going to give you some new scar tissue that's better, better quality. What happens is, is if your body's in a heel to hurry, it lays down scar tissue in a random pattern, kind of like a Chinese uh, finger trap. And that scar tissue tightens over the years and gets worse and worse and it's a disaster. What you want to happen is... You want scar tissue to lay down the correct way of the muscle fibers and the tendons so it acts as much like normal tissue as possible. And that's the whole point of if you get hurt, why they make you like move the joint almost immediately because they don't want the scar tissue setting up randomly. Uh, if they can direct the direction of the scar tissue by making, even though it hurts like hell, moving the joint a little bit, um, you will get good scar tissue. Well, I think my body was like, yeah, we're going to clean this thing out. And my ankle swelled up and it, so I can't sleep. I'm up all night burping. I feel like crap. I feel nauseous. All the smells are making me sick. And now I can't walk. And it's like, I can't do anything. I just sit on the couch and watch, you know, Tim and Eric show. It's like, <laughs> what can I do? Uh, it was, it was awful. Uh, so, um, I'm assuming that's what it was because I didn't do enough. I mean, I'm a tough guy. I can't imagine me like hurting myself shoveling. It's, it doesn't make any damn sense. But, um, and then my other ankle started swelling up later in an old injured spot too, because I, had, I got injuries on both ankles and they only swelled up where the injury was. Like the old scar tissue. It wasn't like the whole ankle. It was on the deltoid ligaments. And, you know, like on the very specific, on the malleoli and stuff. It was it was weird. So combined, I had a really hard last three weeks. And the big reason I just kind of disappeared is I've been so nauseous every night. I didn't feel like getting on the computer and chatting. Because like sitting and typing, making a video, that sort of stuff just makes me feel awful. Um, so I'm hoping now that I eat some food that I'll break out of that. Now, refeeding is no joke. After this many days, what has happened is your 
system, ha your digestive system is basically shut down. I mean, it is working on some fat cells and breaking them down and cleaning out some gunk. I mean, it's, it's minorly going. But as far as you having like a high level of stomach acid, it's not there really. As far as you having, you know, a lot of bile production, not really there. So that's what's going on. Um, we'll see what happens with, uh, with, with that because the, uh, let's see here. I'm sorry here. I'm trying to figure out something. Okay. So what happens is, um, you can't, uh, I just couldn't, I can't stand being nauseous this long. If I could clear, like next month, I think I'm going to work on my gut health completely. Just load up on probiotics, do a bunch of internal cleaning and, uh, see if I can get my gut right. So if I do a long fast again, I won't be like this sick. I think I could totally handle this. Um, the other thing that was really bad for like 30 days was the taste in your mouth. I tasted as my liver detox, there was just tons of metals coming out. Like I tasted, it almost tastes like acetone and, um, copper, maybe copper, I guess constant. I have like the best tongue scraper you can buy. And I was using that crap like eight to 10 times a day. I was just scrape, scrape, scrape. Nothing you could do. Uh, I did use, okay. So uh, there's a lady I know that made magic mud, uh, Jessica, and it's like a black powder you put on your teeth and scrub it. It's like activated charcoal. Well, they came out with some toothpaste, which makes it like a gazillion times easier. And I just started using their toothpaste and it saved my tongue. I was able to like brush my tongue and teeth with this charcoal and it would taste normal for a few hours and then it would go back to taste like chemicals. So you're going to do a long one. Uh, that's what's up. Uh, okay. So yeah, Vic, I had to change over the chat box to just the, the Twitch. I, I was trying to allow everybody to chat, but apparently, you know, there's like little kids over at Mixer. I can't, I can't figure out how to shut it off. Um, See, there's the burping. It just won't stop. But at night, it is freaking ridiculous. So anyway, uh, the way you break a long fast, and I've done a lot of studying about this because I've never done one. Uh, you have to be very careful because you have to turn on your digestion again slowly. And you can't put a lot of fiber or pressure in your intestine or you can actually like put so much pressure, it'll give you a hernia. It'll blow out. Um, you can really wreck your intestines. <laughs> also, to be fair, I have no idea what's going to happen. I might get sick and throw this up. I might immediately run to the bathroom. You know, it's been a long time since I've, I've been able to use the bathroom right. Uh, you know, I had no idea what's going to happen when I do this. So, fair warning on that. Then, uh, hopefully... What happens is you only eat about two ounces of some sort of juicy fruit. Traditionally, most people use watermelon or papaya. I don't have any of that in season right now, so I'm going to use applesauce. It's very watery. It's pretty much like pre-chewed, I guess. I mean, it should be very easy to digest. But something I learned a long, long time ago uh, is that, I mentioned this when you drink smoothies, they should always eat like one uh, say you're going to make cherry smoothies. You should always keep a few cherries out and chew on them before you drink your smoothie because the motion of your jaw chewing, the mastication, actually sends a nervous signal to your stomach saying, hey, stomach, some food's coming, get ready. And the stomach fires to life and starts creating stomach acid. So on that rationale, here we go, 42 days. Um, I have weighed out two ounces you're only allowed two ounces of food two ounces of applesauce and i've made a few little apple uh these are cuts of apples like apple strings for a better term 
they are, um, I'm going to chew on these first to get my digestion going. Now, I haven't had food in over almost 43 days now. So, let's see if I can even taste this or what it's going to taste like. You guys ready for this? Are, are you ready for this? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Ugh. Hold on, I need to drink first. My mouth tastes like hell. Although that's gotten a lot better, uh, it still tastes bad in there. All right, oh, one other sec. You guys, look the other way for a sec. I gotta cough. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. <coughs> okay, here we go. Here we go, and uh, apple stick. Oh my god, it's so sweet. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my god. There's so much flavor to this thing. Oh, it's weird on my tongue now because of all the bad taste on my tongue. I'm going to chew for a while. Wow, there is so much more flavor than normal. Oh my god, my taste buds must be like... It's, it's delicious. I just, um, it tastes bad because of that chemical taste in my mouth, the detox taste. Oh man, I missed fruit. This is really what's strange is... For like 20 days, all I wanted to do is watch videos about food and cooking and plan video, you know, meals when I get off. And it's like, how can I cook something really good when I get done and healthy? And I'm trying to like, you know, have a plan when I come off this thing to have healthy meals ready. But then around day 30, all I started craving was fruit. Like I would uh, smell, we'd open the freezer and there's like frozen blueberries and cherries in there for making smoothies and I would just sit there and smell it and I was like oh my god these blueberries smell so good like all of a sudden my body really wants fruit like it, it smells amazing to me so this tastes amazing oh my god you guys will be like why is he so excited about an apple stick um well I guess, you know, they've said this, that when you detox your, um, your taste buds, that everything, it's kind of like if you don't have salt for a long time and then you have salt, your normal food, you'll be like, oh God, everything's so salty. How can you eat this? Or if you've never had, um, soda for a year and you try to drink a little soda, you'll be like, Jesus, how does anyone drink this stuff? It's pure sugar or it's pure. So, um. I think that eventually this will uh, eventually this will uh, th this is like candy to me right now you know like my taste buds are so I can't believe how sweet this apple is and this apple's like a month old oh my god yeah, Trip. I don't like soda either. Like, I have... I was really, uh... It's funny, because right, we were pretty broke growing up, so my mom just refused to buy soda because it was expensive. She's like, drink water. And so we, um... We were a bunch of water drinkers. And thank God. I am so happy my mom never got us hooked on soda. Because, um... I know she was just being cheap, but it ended up being one of the best things ever because I'm a huge water drinker. And uh, every once in a blue moon, I will have a sip of root beer. I like root beer, but I can't even handle it. It's like one little sip and I'll be like, okay, that's enough for five years. I'm good. You know, um, one time I've had really like a soda is if it's in a, if I'm out drinking and it's in a mixed drink, you know, they like, I'm going to have a 7-7 seven -seven or something. Ah, you heard my phone. 
Yeah, Mountain Dew, man, that's some rough stuff. I mean, it's good, but I'm just telling you, J. Rod, take like six months off and then have a soda, and you'll be like, "How the hell did I ever drink this stuff?" Oh my God, these are so good. Okay, so we're I'm gonna try the applesauce. This is homemade applesauce. It's just cinnamon and apples. Um, I bought it at the farmer's market a long time ago. Uh, it's been canned for a year, so I hope it's okay. Oh my God. Oh, there's so much flavor in this. Holy cow. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to have two, hour, uh, two ounces of food every two hours or so. So about five times today. Tomorrow, I will go up to two and a half ounces of food. The day after, I'll go to three ounces. And I'll do this for about six to seven days. It'll go up an ounce. It'll go up an ounce. Uh, eventually, I'd like to have a smoothie, I think. I'd like to have a smoothie, and um, I'm really craving cherries. So, go ahead and... A smoothie or blueberries uh, Wow I'm already full I've got like two bites okay so I don't think I'll have a problem eating this because it tastes like candy to me right now I am hoping that as my digestion turns back on that this nausea and gas and all that stuff that will stop and what's crazy is you know i've i've read about it and people have had the same kind of things going on but i haven't read anyone that has had it going on for like 30 days straight i think they just quit because it's so hard now if i had to work like a regular job there's no way i couldn't i mean i'm up all night being sick so um I would suggest this to people that, you know, before you do a long one like this, you get a lot of benefits by just doing short ones. You know, you can do a five day, seven day and get a lot out of it. Um, almost made an inappropriate joke. <laughs> well, it's because they almost all died. No, no kidding. <clears throat> but I you know I was looking and I was really reading forums and there's people that I mean there's only a I would say maybe a few thousand people that have fasted this long you know there's not too many people in the world that go this long but I really wanted to take it to the next level and go to like 60 70 days and see what would happen uh, you know go like at least two months and I just couldn't handle the nausea anymore so that's what happened I'm hoping that if I can clean myself out um, and try again because I've still got probably you know a good bit to go before I'm gonna be happy with where I'm at and I was amazed at what came out of me this time around so I can't even tell you what's coming out of my liver it was nuts I look so happy right now <laughs> I do feel better <laughs> I know, I'm going to actually have a laugh. This is the second one during the 42-day fast. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Vic. What did I miss? Oh, you're doing a three-day. Good for you. Yeah, and I know some people are like, I really want to fast. I don't know how to do it. I work. I can't, you know, I can't take that time apart. I can't afford to feel that bad. You know, just start with, like, half-day fast. Do the... 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. thing and don't eat after that. Anyone can handle that. It might be a little hard, a little uncomfortable, but it's a good way to start. After that, you can start doing alternating fasting. Every other day, eat. And if you really can't handle it, you can break it and eat something. Oh, sea lion, thanks for the uh, join. My cat loves you. Thumbs up. See cool cat giving you a thumbs up. Um... Yeah, Iron J. Rod, I, I mean, if it wasn't for the gas, I could have gone 60 days, no doubt. 
I just I just can't handle it. You don't understand. I it is like having the hiccups nonstop for a month. It was that kind of foamy blah 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 blah. blah. I mean, I couldn't even talk to Kate. It was so annoying. Like, I had to just, like, go sit in the back room because all I would do is burp during the shows, you know? And, like, you can't function like this. There's no way. Um, if you were to do a long fast, if you had the money, I would do it supervised in a second. Go to one of those clinics and, you know, down Costa Rica or in California and have it medically supervised. It's a lot safer. If I could have afforded it, I would have done it. Um, but that being said, I think, um, you know, it would be, um, you can, you can do a lot on your own. You just got to be careful. But the problem is, is like almost everybody I know is on some sort of medication, <laughs> And so it really complicates it. When you're on meds, some of them need food to work and you're messing around. So are people going to watch this and be like, oh, I want to try something like this. And I'm going to be like, if you're on medication, don't do it without help from a doctor. You really screw yourself up. Uh, without meds, you're, you're kind of safer to do it. Just go into it easy and learn. I've been fasting 20 years. I've just never done a long one like this. So... Uh, you know, build up to it. Do every other day. You can get a lot with intermittent fasting. Just doing like every other day, not that hard. Really no excuse. I mean, people that can't make it one day, you're toxic as hell. You know, if you can't make it one day, um, or you got no willpower, that, you know, okay, start with a half a day. You know, uh, start... Whatever you got to do to build it. But you can build it and you can build willpower. And eventually one day you'll just get to the point where you're like, the short fasting will get you results, but it won't get you the same results as like a deep long fast. Like I was peeing out brown chemicals uh, from my liver that are probably, you know, 20 years old. I mean, the stuff that was coming out in the toilet was crazy. Um, my pee looked like coffee sometimes. It was nuts. And I didn't really get that until like day 25, 30. Like my liver really started to dump and my kidneys started to clean out. Um, and those two areas, if you can get the kidneys working right, if you can clean the plaque off them all the years of eating a high protein diet and the acidosis and the mucus that's stuck to them, if you get the kidneys to work right, man you will start really feeling better because then you can process lymph out of your body and get rid of your trash. But right now, it's kind of like a clogged filter in a fish tank. It's just full of crap. And it, it, it think of it like a fish tank, your kidneys. Uh, and your kidneys are the filter that by not eating, it lets it slowly work that filter clean and get it going. And you will see it coming out in your pee. It's... I. I I did document a lot of this on video. Um, it's uh, one of these days when I'm finally done with everything, I'll put everything together. A little graphic, but some people want to know from start to finish, you know, what are the nitty gritty details? And I'm, I'm going to share them with you. So, uh, let's see. Vicki, am I going back to a regular schedule? Not for a little bit. I still got to build up my energy. But. I'm hoping um, as that energy returns, uh, I will start feeling normal enough to do stuff. Yeah, River Swept, I am documenting. If I hadn't told you, I've lost 50 pounds doing just this fast, 42 days. So I've got like before and after videos. Um, I've also got uh, some of the stuff that was going on with my pee. You know, that's just too hard to explain. Like, it's just easier to see a video of it. Um, I documented every day on my calendar is like what problems I'm having and what's the good stuff, what's the bad stuff. So I've weighed, I've measured, I've kept track of body fat, hydration, 
um, bone mass, muscle mass. Because a lot of the people are like, um, they don't understand fasting. They think that you are on a starvation diet. And it's completely different. Like if I were to go on a very low calorie diet, say I was like, I'm doing 500 calories a day or something. Your body never goes into heal mode. It's in constant starvation mode. And it is a different, um, is a different way for your body to act. When you go water fasting, you are actually in a heal mode where your body's like, okay, I don't have to deal with digestion right now. I've got an excess of, you know, 50 pounds. Let's clear this crap out of you. Let's clear these toxic chemicals out. You don't get that on a starvation diet. Um, and you will see, like, people are already hating on my comments and stuff like that. They'll just be like, uh, you know, you're going to just lose water weight and you'll put it right back on and blah, blah, blah. And they don't understand fasting is... Um, fat is water like your fat cells are 80% water so as you burn fat and that toxic crap comes out of you yeah you're going to dump a lot of water weight but fat is water um, so you will it depends how you eat when you come out of this I'm going to be eating very minimally and eating just fruits so I don't expect to put on a more than a two or three pounds you know like as my stomach acids come back online and I start making fluids and retaining some of these fluids from the vegetables and the, the fruit I will put on some weight because I'm making body uh, I'm making bile I'm making you know stomach juice that sort of stuff so you can uh That, that will happen, but what usually happens is people never get past their like crazy cravings. They don't go long enough, and so they just come out and start eating the same shit that they were eating before they started. And it is a problem because then they, they're like, well, I lost all this weight, and then I gained like 20 of it back. And it's like, well, what did you eat? Well, I really miss pizza. I went out and got a pizza with my wife, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well... Okay, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's not that I don't plan on ever having like fun food again, you know, I do want to, um, be able to go out and have, you know, uh, restaurant food with, with my girlfriend once in a while, or I want to be able to go do something. And, um, I don't plan on doing this forever, but I have eaten recklessly for like 40 years so i've got to pay the price and get down to a healthy weight that i can maintain get my liver working right get my digestive system working right and repair all this crap that i did to myself by living like a rock star and um and when that's done then yeah you can have a little once in a while like i don't want to live a life where i can't go out you know i don't want to do that but it just can't be like you know, I'm eating out every day. That sort of stuff. That's just not not good. Ah, uh, she makes. Thanks for coming. Appreciate you swinging through. <clears throat> I'm just re rehydrating right now on applesauce, which is the best damn applesauce. Oh my god, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> this applesauce is so good. What's funny, though, is this is only two ounces of applesauce, and I am really, like, pushing. I, I'm I'm not sure I'm going to have much more, because uh, I'm, like, full. It's crazy. I'm, uh, I'm about done. Um, but it is so nice not to have that chemical taste in my mouth, to actually have, like, a good taste in my mouth. Oh, I can't even tell you how nice that is. You have no idea what it's like that no matter how much you um, scrape your tongue and know how much you like brush your tongue with charcoal and that like two hours later your mouth tastes like death again and it's just like chemicals all these chemicals coming out and I know that um, I know this is going to be worth it because I just saw so much stuff come from my liver out that I couldn't believe all the toxic crap in my body that is coming out because you know all the 
plastics and pesticides and preservatives and, you know, a standard American diet. You know, you eat a box of cereal and you just digested a bunch of chemicals. You know, it's it's that stuff doesn't go away. It just gets pushed into your liver and fat cells and then into your lymph if you can't handle it. Um, that stuff's always in your body until you give it time to clean house. And that only happens with like a deep fast. So I am very excited that I, I paid the price. And I think, um, I think when I start eating, things should work better. I hope my digestion works a lot better. I think I'll feel a lot better. I think my energy level will be better. My mind will be clear. It's just been a really hard few weeks. The last few weeks of this has been tough. So I would not recommend it to any of you guys. Hi, Alec. I appreciate you coming. Uh, I wouldn't recommend you do anything like this until you've really gotten good at fasting. And I would definitely spend more time getting your gut biome ready. I wish I had taken a lot more probiotics. I wish I had, uh, if I had known it was going to be this miserable, I would have done a huge intestinal cleanse first. I thought I was good enough and because I've, you know, I've been able to fast like a week or two and it's, it's a little annoying and it's not comfortable, but it's not like what this was. This is a different experience. Um, as far, as far as the spirituality stuff, it didn't really open up until the last like five days, the last five days I can meditate and get like crazy images and visions and, um, and energy connections. Thanks. She mix that stuff does actually work. I see why a lot of holy men, you know, fast and pray because your body does. But I think I was so freaking toxic. Um, that my body just went into crisis mode for a month and and that's all it worked on because what happens is i wanted my body to do like my intestines suck so i wanted my body to clean that out i wanted to get the holy grail the mucoid plaque to come out i wanted uh my intestines to you know just push out all that old stuff stuck to the walls it didn't do any of that i barely went to the, i've been to the bathroom twice in 42 days um, it didn't do any of that. What my body said, nope, that's going to wait. You know what I'm going to work on? I'm going to work on your liver and your kidneys. And that's all it did for like 40 days is work on my liver. Um, so my liver must have been bad because it didn't even really mess with my intestines. Um, it wanted to clean house on my liver and holy cow, can you smell and see the chemicals coming out of you when you pee? It, it looks like, I don't know if you've ever known someone who takes liver drugs, how their, um, their pee looks when they're taking a lot of drugs. That's what it looked like. It looked like, um, it went from chai tea to dark coffee, like your peas. There was that much Billy Rubin in it that my body was, um, taking out a bunch of old, crappy tissues and old crappy cells and burning fat and so there was a lot of billy ribbon coming out um but it's all part of the process you know all right what did i miss you guys i read once uh that in a study was done where they fed one group of my cereal the other group uh, the box that it was in and the ones that ate the cereal died. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> Probably true. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible, but it's probably true. It's probably... And that's the thing, you know, I mean, I, I grew up eating junk food. My mom didn't cook, barely. My grandpa fed me and all he knew how to make was like hot dogs and Navy food, like, you know, we called it shit on a shingle. Do you guys remember that stuff? It's like beef stroganoff on toast. You know how to make hot dogs, that, and grilled cheese. And that's that was my diet as a kid. And Captain Crunch. A lot of peanut butter Captain Crunch was my favorite. Um, 
so as I got older, like I didn't even eat vegetables until my late twenties. I just thought they were gross. I wouldn't eat. Uh, I basically wouldn't eat anything, uh, except uh, junk food. You know, Nutter bars and Long John Silver planks, and you know, like fried food. And I just had really bad diet, and then. As I got into chiropractic school, I learned how to clean my diet up. I started eating a lot more stir fries. I started fasting, cleaned it up, lost some weight, got healthier, but never really, um, never really kicked the uh, urge to eat that stuff. Like I still, if you put some Captain Crunch in front of me, I'd probably still eat it. It's just here's what happened that changed everything for me in the last five years. The way I came off a lot of junk food was they changed all the junk food over from sugar to high fructose corn syrup. So nothing tastes like it did when I was a kid now. Things don't taste right at all anymore. So like, I used to love it when my mom made uh, uh, Rice Krispie treats. But you can't find marshmallows that aren't made out of corn syrup now. They're all like, so when I have a Rice Krispie treat, it tastes like chemicals to me. I'm like, this is terrible. You know, it doesn't taste as good as when I was a kid. All my favorite candies don't taste right anymore. Um, so that really helped me come off on a lot of the junk food that I liked because none of it tastes right. So I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but it is, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, I don't know. None of that stuff is fun anymore. I think the most upsetting thing to me ever was uh, I love strawberry pies. I worked at Bob's Big Boy as a kid. Uh, it was the only job I could get when I was under 16. It was like one of the only places that didn't serve liquor. So I was a waiter and I'd work these really crazy hours. And one of the things I discovered there was their strawberry pie. And it was so simple. It was like strawberry, uh, strawberry like globe sauce, which was like, I don't know, cornstarch and sugar. And uh, they put it on a graham cracker crust, throw some whipped cream on it, and it was done. And that was it. And it was so damn good. I would eat a piece of strawberry pie every day at work. It was so good. Um, and I loved this pie, and I hadn't had it in like 20 years. And I finally found a Bob's Big Boy... Like three years ago, me and Kate were traveling through North Carolina. I saw one. I was like, we got to try this pie. It's the best damn pie ever. I go there, and I know they changed their recipe because when I had one bite of it, I was like, this is gross. This isn't the pie I remember at all. And it was all because I'm sure it was high fructose corn syrup. So probably good for me to uh, that they put that in everything because it keeps me from eating. I just, I just can't stand the way stuff tastes anymore. I do cook a lot. Like, I haven't been out to eat in probably three months. I mean, I cook everything. Because I just can't trust going out to eat. I don't know what the hell's in there half the time. But I do miss, uh, I like Asian food. I miss, I miss Asian food. I really want to go to one of those hibachi grills, you know, where they cook all those vegetables up. This would be good. I miss that. Upper Michigan. Oh, I was there. I went past the Grand Hotel. Across that bridge. I went to this place called the Mystery Spot Trip. Do you know where that is? I, IP? Or UP, sorry. UP? Mystery Spot. So, if you guys don't know, there's like this thing this mystery spot it, they don't tell you what it is at all and um it's in the upper michigan peninsula when you go there it is a uh, a magnetic spot that you know like the compasses are all weird um like balls will roll appear to roll uphill like gravity doesn't seem to work right there it was pretty neat i went up there and uh had some fun Um, yeah, near Iron Mountain. I, I don't know Iron Mountain, but I did stop. Like I said, I'm a tourist, so I stopped at the mystery spot. 
I will say the Upper Peninsula had more mosquitoes than I've ever seen in my life. We were driving uh, through it. I guess the mosquitoes had just come out and the windshield was so covered with them. I think we had to stop twice and wipe them off the windshield. It was so bad. Uh, and then when we stopped, we got attacked by mosquitoes and had to jump like right back in the car. It's like, you pump the gas. No, you pump the gas. <laughs> We're playing rock, paper, scissors to pump the gas because there's so many mosquitoes out there. So uh, yeah, they got some mosquitoes up there. It's uh, no joke up there. Um, Vicky, you guys probably get a lot of mosquitoes, don't you, in uh, British Columbia? I would bet you do. Seems like a very mosquito-y place. Oh, I already feel a little better. Um, we'll see what happens, though, because I, uh, I didn't get any sleep last night. I stay up till, like, 5 in the morning watching... Adult Swim, uh, you know, like uh, Tim and Eric, awesome show, good job, great job. <laughs> that show's so stupid, but so funny. Oh my God, it makes me laugh. Um, so I have a feeling this is going to take a few days to rehydrate myself with some fruit. Oh, you've been to the Grand Hotel? Oh my God, I love that movie somewhere in time um but i've only driven past it i've never i thought it was too expensive to stay at i thought it was like 500 dollars a night or something so i uh i totally want to go sometime it's it's, it's on my to-do list i got lots of to-do list i want to go to that giraffe hotel in kenya you guys seen that thing you stay in like giraffes wake you up in the morning and stick their head in the room uh it's pretty cool um, I want to go to that hotel in Iceland where you can sit and watch the Northern Lights and Igloos. Universe needs to drop some big money on me so I can go do all these cool things. Uh, okay. So do you guys have questions? Because there's a lot to discuss and I have kept records of everything i will make a detailed thing when i'm finally done but i don't think i'll be at my i'm trying to get to my high school weight again and hold that i think that's my healthy weight and not that this is just about weight but i'm tired of being you know it's it's like a reflection of how healthy you are inside if you're fat outside you're not healthy inside um obviously i want my organs to run right I mean, that's a huge reason, but I'm also uh, tired of being fat and I'm ready to be fit and able to go do what I want. And I think that my goal is this. I'm going to spend this month kind of starting to refeed, get back into eating. Um, I will start doing intermittent fasting again eventually, not right away. And then what will happen is I'm going to work all on my intestinal health for like a month. I'm just going to load up on probiotics and try to clean it out. And after that, I'll probably start doing shorter fasts, like 14 days, 14 days, 14 days, until I hit where I want to be. I'll just keep fasting this toxic crap out of me. Uh, I don't think I'll do another long one like this for a while. Doesn't mean I won't ever do one. Uh, but this was brutal, so I don't, I don't have the drive to do it again for a while. It is something I'm glad I did once in my life, at least. I wish I had gone longer. I would like to go on to like 60, 70 days. Uh, but this is good enough. 42 is, you know, I, I, I set a goal and I hit it just barely, but I got there. Uh, it's funny, I was looking at some of the comments and there were like some really hostile people and they were like, you're lying, you're such a liar there's no way you could, you'd die if you did that and it's like, have you ever w looked at the internet? like thousands of people go way longer than 42 days, you can definitely do it, what happens is people think, um, there's this myth that you know, you have to have certain amino acids or you'll die or you'll have to have um, 
you know, essential aminos or B12 or all this. What they don't really tell you is when you're really fat and overweight, you've stored a lot of those nutrients as well as the toxic crap. So, like, you can um, do a long fast and still have released nutrients slowly in your body. You don't, I would have died if that were true and obviously i didn't and thousands of other people have not it's it's uh i think it's very misunderstood by science uh fasting they they say it's a lot more dangerous than it is but it's silly because it has been in culture since you know antiquity so many cultures do it so many ancient books have talked about it and it was like a normal part of living back in the day and a normal part of life and now they've made it into you know an eating disorder uh would i consider trying diatomaceous earth to cleanse if i had a really hard parasite problem yeah maybe i don't think i do i think i mainly have bacterial so uh i i mean parasite uh, diatomaceous earth is good for cleaning worms and stuff i don't feel like i really have any of that they don't seem to have the same um, symptoms. Like with worms, you get, I don't know how to be more graphic. I'm not trying to be graphic, but you get more like an itchy butthole. You get uh, rashes, you get uh, um, actually a lot of times unexplained weight loss, not weight gain. You get, uh, you know, really sick. A lot of people get really sick with parasites. That's not what's going on with me. I'm mainly having gas issues, which is a digestion breakdown problem. I got the wrong kind of bacteria eating what I'm supposed to be eating, I think. Uh, Trip, it, it probably is. I mean, I, uh, I've i used it. I haven't really saw any results when I used it. I wasn't that impressed with it. I know some people swear by it. I'm not going to tell people not to use it. I just don't really have much experience with having it do much. Uh, I am going to use... Let's see if I got it. Oh, crap. My ankle hurts. Uh, this is what I use. Now, Apex Energetics is like the finest nutraceuticals you can buy. Money can buy. You have to be a doctor to get it. It is um, an antibiotic, a natural antibiotic bomb that goes off. It's got wormwood, black nut, you know, uh, bayberry, olive, garlic extract, cat's claw, uva, golden seal, or oregano, <clears throat> oregano, excuse me, uh, golden thread, yerba. I mean, it's got tons of stuff in here. What this does is it um, wipes out parasites, yeast, Worms, bad bacteria, all, pretty much all bacteria. This is like a bomb going off in your gut. And what it does is it sets you back down to ground zero. So what I'll do is I'll wipe everything out with this and then load myself with proper probiotics. And uh, hopefully that'll do it. The problem is Apex is outrageously expensive. Um, and this is the way it normally works with nutrition. The stuff that actually works and good is really expensive and the uh it's very difficult to get you gotta basically know a doctor to get it once in a while you might find a rogue seller on amazon they don't last very long and you're gonna pay up the wazoo for it you pay like a hundred dollars for that uh that is probably what i'll do um Yeah, Trip, I don't know if it works or not that well. It's, I don't know how much of it's internet legend. I, um, I'm not opposed. I mean, it's not going to hurt you, I don't think, but it's, I haven't really seen much results. So I'm going to use some of this nutrition I have that I've paid for already a long time ago and just finish it out. But after that, I hope that my gut will be right that I don't need any more vitamins. Like, I want to get to a point where I don't need supplements that I can just eat good, healthy foods, and I, I do okay. I, I've, um, especially coming from a world where I use supplements for everything, you know, I really try to help patients. It was a fight because your fight is, your lifestyle is ultimately making you sick. But 
it's hard to live so far out of a lifestyle that um, you don't feel like you're living life anymore. So in other words, really the only healthy things to eat are fruits and vegetables. Everything else is bad for you. I mean, pretty much. Fruits, vegetables, seeds, that sort of stuff. You know, uh, nuts. Everything else causes an acid reaction and a breakdown in your body. Meats, dairies, uh, processed food, sugars, salts. Even salts and spices aren't really good for you. Like Nothing's really good for you except natural food. The problem is we're so indoctrinating um, that it is so hard to give up that lifestyle of being able to go out and have an awesome meal, you know, at a restaurant and enjoy your pad thai or whatever, and not, um, and it's super addicting food. It rewards your brain with pleasure. So it's, it's really hard to talk to a patient and be like, okay, you want this pain to stop? You want all this chronic stuff to stop? Fruits and vegetables, water fast. And they'll be like, well, is there any other way? You know, I can't do that. Well, you can use supplements and kind of bridge it for a while. But eventually, they're going to stop working. So patients will come in. They'll take some high-power supplements. It'll help heal their bodies. But it's really not the greatest answer. It's like a sh it's pretty much like green medication. It's like a short-term fix. The real fix is to detoxify the crap out of you and let your body heal um but it's a very hard sell for people they just can't let go of that lifestyle and it's tough because i have a hard time letting go of it too it's it's a lot of good addicting food out there so there you go um any other questions guys What are we talking about? Easter? It's Easter Sunday, dude. It's always Sunday. <laughs> Isn't Easter always on Sunday? I think so. Trip says, we stopped eating pork and beef, eating a lot of salad and veggies. Now I'm craving veggies. Yeah, your taste buds do change. Like, I'm really craving fruit right now, which is weird because I thought the first thing I'd ever want like, I like noodles, you know, rice, that sort of stuff. I'm kind of like a secret Asian or something. I really like that. Oh, I guess Italians eat a lot of pasta, but sadly, Italian food's so bad most of the time for you. It's just so good. But there's there's not that much healthy Italian food. Everybody's like, the Mediterranean diet's so healthy. And then you look and you're like, that's not what they're eating. Um... All right. Uh, weird Canadian stuff. <laughs> I do love Canadians. If you guys have any other questions, uh, I'm here to listen. Answer your questions honestly, because they are... fun okay well does anyone have a question all right I appreciate you guys joining me for my first meal I'll see if I can keep it down today and uh, we'll go raid peach hip say hello to her for a minute and close this thing out. How much have you lost? Uh, I've lost 50 pounds on the nose, which is kind of odd that it'd be like exact, but it just worked out that way. 50 pounds. So, you're welcome. I hope you learned something. We'll talk a lot more. I'm sure I'll get a gazillion questions about this. And we will uh, we'll have some fun. I'll see you guys in the next uh, next time I feel good. Bye everybody.